Hi everyone, it's Nick Pavlov and I welcome you to our channel where we talk about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. In our latest video, I talked about the calculation groups feature and briefly touched on field parameters. Now after making the video, I realized that as the video was getting too long, I just kind of went very high level on field parameters in the end. So that's why in this video I wanted to take a step back and spend more time talking about field parameters as I believe this feature brings a lot of value to end users in Power BI. In my experience with Power BI adoption projects, I have seen many use cases when adoption among users was not going well. One of the key reasons why I think this was happening is because reports developed for business users uh, are a bit too complex and involve unnecessary amount of steps. Uh, too many pages, too many visuals, drill throughs, and, and all the things that someone like my aunt, for example, uh, who is a long time Excel user, uh, just wouldn't feel comfortable working with. And trust me, it's a very common thing when you build a fascinating Power BI report, but all you get asked in the end is how to export that to Excel. I mean, that happens all the time. Now, let's take a look at this report. This is not a bad looking report at all. Here we have years in the top slicer. We have four different measures uh, that are uh, just basic measures, really. These are the total sales. I got cost, profit, which is sales minus cost. And then also uh, we also use quantity. So if we have four different measures, sometimes more, sometimes people put five, six, seven measures in one report and it starts getting too crowded and hard to see what's what. And people get confused and, you know, the, the end users looking at the report, it's, it's not too straightforward what they're looking at. So another thing here is the matrix that I have uh, down here. And in the matrix, you can only put one measure uh, in matrix like that. I mean, you can obviously put more measures, but then you have to scroll to your right. And that's not really good, right? You can't really put more measures in here. That's going to be uh, just very confusing. So to avoid cluttering visuals like this, uh, you could, uh, in the past, right, I guess we just created more visuals and pages. So what I would do in the past, right, I would kind of copy this visual right here and paste it down here. And then I will remove uh, these two visuals. Sorry, not visuals, measures. And then I will separate basically them, uh, the four measures into, um, into two different visuals. And that was a, a common thing. But then what you're getting is that you have, you start having way too many visuals in one page. And then your real estate, your space, uh, you can operate with in your report isn't used as best as it, as it could be. Again, the more visuals it is, the more confusing it is, and then your reports start to render slower. So it's also another problem. So instead of doing this, now in Power BI, we can use field parameters. Uh, let's, let's take a look at what could be done to improve this page. What we could do to have an easier, uh, more visually appealing report. So what I'm going to do is I will uh, right click and then duplicate this page. And then I'm going to call this, um, you know, field parameters end. And then uh, first thing I'm going to do is I will remove this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the modeling tab and then create a new parameter. Now, if you don't have this for some reason, that means you, you haven't updated your Power BI desktop. In the new version of it, I think starting from March or something, you should have that in your Power BI desktop. If you don't have it, well, go ahead and update your Power BI desktop. So either way, you're going to go ahead and uh, create fields. And then right here, we can give uh, the name to our measure, which I'm going to call this uh, measure selector. And then I'm going to go to the sales table right here and then choose the four measures that I would like to use right in this parameter. Keep in mind that when picking measures, if you want to have a certain order of your measures, then 
you must select that measure first and then second and then third, etc. I mean, obviously you can change that later, but might as well just do it right away, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do sales cost and then that's going to be profit and also uh, quantity like that. And then I'm going to create this and a new slicer is uh, going to be added to my page. So that's the code. You don't have to worry too much about it at this point. So what I'm going to do is also I'm going to change the format of this slicer to make it easier. So what I will do is I will drag this to my left. So I'm going to go to the slicer sections and turn it into a, a drop down. In my opinion, in my experience, this type of slicer is the easiest to understand for most people. And it's very intuitive format, you know, but of course you can feel free to have another format. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do a drop down and then in the slicer settings, I will add in the selection, I will do select all. So I can choose um, all options if needed. I'm going to also change this slicer up here uh, to the drop down so I can have it in the same format. And then I will add a shade and then I can put these slicers in here. That doesn't matter. So now I have year and then I'll also add select all option. And then I have these measures right here. So now what I'm going to do is I will go to the slicer, uh, sort of a bar chart that I have, and then I will remove these measures. And instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the field parameter measure, which I just created, and then add this measure selector field. I'm going to add this into the Y axis of my visual, of my bar chart. So here I have month and then I have the measure. And then I'm going to do the same for my matrix down here. So what I will do, I will remove the total sales value. And instead of the total sales, I'm going to add the measure selector field right here. Let me resize this a little bit. Let me do that to 11 or 10, maybe close the data pane. And so then using the slicers above, I can now switch between the year and then between each of these measures. So when I select sales or cost or profit or quantity, then obviously the numbers in my matrix are going to change. Values in my bar chart are also going to change. So that is very convenient. Like right now, for example, if I wanted to select uh, uh, sales and profit, I can double click and then just kind of see these, these two measures without over cluttering and populating, overpopulating my bar chart with a bunch of measures. And then I can choose another year. What else I'm going to do is let me select one measure. And then I'm going to add a card visual right here. And in here, I will also use the field parameter. I can make this smaller and kind of aligned with this. All right. It's kind of like this. And so what I have here is for each of my years, I can see the total sales. I can see different measures. And this is a very simple looking report. So in this sample report, I have demonstrated how using the field parameter feature, you can improve a report and make it more flexible and dynamic and also easier to use and visually appealing. And I can get all of the analytics that I need from this two visuals. Really, that's, that's about it. I hope you liked this video. If you would like to know more about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric, feel free to reach out to me and ask questions. Uh, please give us a like and if you're interested in what we do, consider subscribing to our channel. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later.